Well, hi everyone, welcome back. I've just been um, having a short break from painting and I've been looking at a um, an article that I um, produced for Leisure Painter magazine. Um, I do this um, um, several times a year and um, so for this tutorial I've decided to use the subject that I demonstrated and um, explained um, in this particular edition. It's um, going back to June 2020 so um, if you were lucky enough to see that edition then um, obviously uh, um, you have the full transcript of it all um, but basically um, <coughs> I'd like to uh, talk talk exactly um, the process required to paint this type of subject. Well here we are then, this is the subject in hand as you can see. Um, <clears throat> obviously the first thing you do with a drawing like, with a painting like this is to produce a drawing. And it's a simple outline drawing, although it's quite complicated. Um, we've got the buildings. Where I would have started would be the corner of this building. Because if you position that correct, whether you get half that chimney in or that chimney and, the, and a little roof or all of that or all of that doesn't really make any difference providing you've got the the um, uh, the building off center to the left because I suppose that's the focal point then you've got depth then you've got some buildings in the distance and um, so that's the way I would have started in that area work your way this way drawing and work your way that way if you you will make little mistakes with sizes of the drawings um, you know there's little mistakes in how much that that uh, sticks out um, little mistakes of perhaps even the length of that against the width um, but that's the thing you want to look for the height against the width and and the length of the building so that's why you 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 hold your um, a, a brush up and you and you look at it with at arm's length uh, the width and then you look at the height and sometimes the width is half the height sometimes it's twice the height um, and so that's the way you get basic drawing onto your paper this is a coast uh, a coastal subject it's um, um, it's the old ship at Haybridge Basin here on the Essex coast and we've got the, the, this is a lock that comes in to a canal that leads to the Chelmsford Basin um, in uh, in the city and that is the lock area that takes you I don't know what the rise is um, it's several several meters from the water out in the estuary and eventually to the open sea to the canal that runs as I say through to Springfield Basin in Chelmsford and um, <clears throat> it's a lovely lovely part of the uh, of Essex to paint so that's basically what the the drawing then I would have laid on the sky I would have painted around the chimneys and the buildings and I actually painted around these built buildings um, and what I wanted to get the fennel of light coming from the right so when I painted the sky I would have wetted the paper right the way over then I would have dropped in the yellows and um, um, reds we're talking my old favorite raw sienna light red could have even used a little bit of crimson there I can see um, so I dropped that in. The crimson really was to introduce the blue um, as a base, so that the yellow doesn't run into the um, uh, into the uh, blue, and then you end up with a, a green sky. Uh, the main thing is you don't mix it. You can stroke it across, provided you don't mix it. Then you still more or less guaranteed that they they keep separate, and you, and you wouldn't get green. 
Um, <clears throat> but having said that, I always create a light sky to indicate the direction of sunlight. <clears throat> then I created a very dark sky. So we've got a light sky that gives a direction of sunlight. Then to light up the buildings, we've gone with a dark sky. So that would have been ultramarine, might even be Prussian or Windsor blue, a little cobalt in there. It's probably a mixture of all those, those three actually. Once that was completely dry, and I mean completely dry, we didn't, I didn't want too much running of the of the building up into the sky. Uh, I would have um, produced, um, oh, and by the way, as I produced that sky, I actually put a little bit of green there so that I, I didn't go back in. That gives that little bit of depth because the, the, the estuary runs around, so there is little buildings and what have you there but don't, I didn't want any detail at that point uh, apart from the two figures just standing there um, and I did drop in a little bit of distance there but nothing nothing too too fussy I wanted that to drift away then I painted the greens uh, for the grass nothing too severe nothing too um, fussy just a nice straight green wash then I would have tinted in the colours on the building, the, the, the um, tile work, um, and the slate work and the tile work, tile on there. Um, it is the old Essex board, uh, which was painted pink, which I thought was quite nice actually for this particular subject. It leads the eye towards the, uh, the buildings on the left and then the eye is then drawn to the distance. Um, once that dries I would have put in the windows, the chimneys, if you notice how these two are very dark, those are very light, um, that just, it's just a good combination really I think. Um, then I would have painted in a little bit of the, of the distant buildings, there's a coffee shop there and uh, looks out onto the estuary, it's a lovely little um, place to visit, uh, Haybridge Basin, and one or two, um, uh, there was a, a a sailing barge I believe in the distance there you can see the the mast and the sails um, but all these would be quite kept quite light then a little hint at windows um, obviously those windows have gone in nicely with the um, uh, with the building keep them fairly dark um, nothing too fussy if you look closely they're not very they're not fussy the door I've made as if it's open so it's not like a, a just a block of door. I've, I've made the, the, a, a film of light entering the left hand side because of the sun coming from the right. That little bit of light entering the left. Um, then I put in uh, smaller details, a bit of the board work, um, uh, figures and uh, the, the, the fencing. Uh, and of course the, um, the lock gate itself where we've got the bridge that goes across um, and the old um, a pulley I think that was more or less here but I did move it over because I wanted it in a strategic position within the composition uh, and then came the shadows a nice deep dark shadow you know don't be afraid to go strong with these shadows um, particularly if you're trying to, to indicate strong sunlight um, you can go too dark with them, but I would say keep them on the bluer side because that helps. And if they look a little too dark, they're probably right. If they look about the right tone when you stroke the brush on, then that will probably dry a tone or two light than you actually require. So that's what I would say about um, shadows. Keep them a tone darker in the mix once it dries it, it, it all um, um, tones back a, a tone or two and um, you even see the windows if you uh, these windows don't go right to the eave um, but um, uh, if they did stroke across the windows because you think you've lost the windows but if you just put one brush stroke across of color then leave it you'll find that um, uh, once it dries, the windows that you thought had disappeared, or the glazed areas, will actually shine back through. 
because it drives a tone or so lighter and all of a sudden the windows appear the glazed areas um, you know there's a lots of shadow work there you know um, or a little bit I always like a little bit of re rebate shadows recess shadows um, as if the windows are sitting back uh, those windows were flush and notice how simply they're painted you know um, one or two details with the lamps or and the shadow from the pub sign the old ship sign you know all very loose if you if you paint loose in one area you can get away with a loose interpretation in another area once you start showing detail like fussy windows all square and neat then the gutter has got to be square and neat you've got to have the chimneys like nice and neat then you've got to start showing brickwork you know um the looser you are with the initial washers the the looser you can be throughout the picture it's more an impression of what you're looking at rather than a, a, a copy of, of of the scene itself really um and then this lovely shadow in the foreground that was vital um i didn't go up the side of that i made that into uh, as if that was in sunlight but to the left of that is shadow um a little bit of weak shadow. see i've been very weak in the distance with that shadow so as you go into the distance you, every the buildings uh, get lighter and of course the, their their shadows get lighter as well um, but this shadow here and what i've done um obviously could be cloud today so what i've done uh, that's a hard edge shadow that's from the lock keeper's cottage that's out of picture this is a soft edge shadow and that is from a cloud uh, uh, that's slightly in the way of the sun and that creates a soft edge cloud, um, shadow because that shadow is close to the object you'll get a hard edge the further away the object that's shadowing an area the softer the edge will be and eventually you'll see cloud shadows are uh, if, they're, if, if they're fairly local across the landscape you can see them a lot uh, but quite often a shadow sweeps across and it uh, just gets to a position where you think oh that's it that's where and then it sweeps right over and then everything goes uh, dark but you'll notice they are soft edges so all I did is damped the paper there and then just swept in a shadow colour and allowed it to blur so you've got a little bit of atmosphere on that left hand side that's it really well there you are that's my talk tutorial for this Wednesday um, hope you've enjoyed that if you have please subscribe to my YouTube channel and um, this coming Friday 6 p.m. will be another watercolor landscapes made easy and uh, I'm looking at painting trees in a landscape so I hope you'll join me this coming Friday 6 p.m. UK time if you're not available to make it in my premiere edition at which starts at 6 which you can ask questions um, uh, if you wish um, then you can pick it up at any point uh, after 6 p.m. this evening so thank you very much for watching take care and we'll see you on Friday